and after the test or whatever information has been already provided so that way it will proceed okay so i hope your other friends will be joining so Marin, he has said that he said okay but i don't think i, I cannot see him so they will be joining right do you know uh, yes sir yes sir he will be joining okay Okay, Ricolo is here. Good morning, Ricolo. Morning, sir. Okay, we'll be waiting for maybe another two minutes for your friends to join. Otherwise, we'll have to uh, start. Okay. So, is my screen visible? Is the PPT visible? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, in the meantime, uh, tell me if you have any question, any doubt uh, from the previous modules or whatever we have discussed from third module. Okay, if you have any doubt, you can ask. Any question up to the last class? If no, just no. tell me. The, okay, okay, okay. No, sir, no, sir. Okay, so in the last class we have discussed, we have started discussing about this module, third module. Okay, so third module, as we have already discussed, there will be basically three parts, and we are talking about geometric modeling here. And there will be three parts one will be, will be discussing about the uh, your wireframe model, then the surface model, and solid models. Okay, so part one already we have discussed, so there we have seen that basically three types of geometric models are available. That is wireframe model, also known as the line model, surface model, and solid or volume model. Okay, and uh, depending on what is required for a particular, suppose uh, uh, for modeling a particular product. Okay, so based on that, you will be using your judgment and uh, for that particular construction phase, and depending on the ease of using that particular technique during that construction phase or its expected utilization, which may result in proper uh, uh, different results and all, okay? And which ultimately can be later on utilized as a kind of database, CAD database. So based on that, actually you are going to select which particular modeling you are going to do. So there we have already discussed about the wireframe modeling. So uh, we have discussed that basically this wireframe is something like, you can consider, you can visualize like, I wear that is being bent to follow the different uh, the edges which are present on that particular object so as to generate that particular model. So we have later discussed about its simplicity and different advantages like it's simple to construct and doesn't require that much time for uh, time and memory for, for compared to like you can say other two type of modeling that is surface or solid modeling and uh, also it is kind of the very easy so you don't have to have a undergo a concept you can say like extensive training for the user to the model a particular model okay it's comparatively easier than that of the other so these advantages etc we have discussed also we have seen that some uh, different disadvantages also are associated with this particular type of model like generally ambiguous representation of different objects okay it might be there and similarly depending on suppose who is the who is the person who is visualizing or perceives in that particular whatever is the wireframe model based on that we can we can have like some difficulties like as we have to given this particular example of that particular cube so depending on like how you visualize depending on that it's in this particular model and in this particular one okay so you, you may you may get puzzled which was which was kind of the front face whether this is this head space is the front face or this one is you can consider as the front face and all okay so this kind of ambiguity it is there and uh, as uh, sometimes it becomes confusing because there will be so many lines and all 
okay so can be sometimes it can be uh, hidden like here it is shown in this particular left hand side figure okay sometimes it might be big, bigger the, like hidden sometimes some dash mark we may use and like this okay so sometimes it becomes confusing similarly it is possible in the, if you look at this particular middle figure or middle object okay it's possible to like uh, like uh, you can say just where do the modeling of some model which is actually physically impossible to construct okay so if you if you go to this particular model you will select that so later on we have discussed about different from entities so they have discussed that basically analytical synth and synthetic entities are actually there so under analytical entities the already we have discussed like point line different arms the standard fillet samples different conical sections like ellipse parabola hyperbola etc those are kind of the analytical entities and for them already well defined uh, some geometrical data or mathematical equation etc it is available and uh, there are actually like certain synthetic and uh, synthetic entities also like different types of spline like cubic spline bezier curve uh, like a uh, piece plane etc and bezier curve etc these are some of the kind of different synthetic entities and why these syn uh, synthetic entities are required because see if you think of diff in different models which are comparatively complex or maybe you can think of like Aerodynamic shape, etc. So there we have to have different freeform surfaces, different freeform uh, in, uh, models. Okay. So in those cases, we the, all those standard analytical entities will not result in the efficient kind of model. So in those cases, there will be like certain uh, higher order kind of or higher level spline, like cubic spline, B spline, I can say new spline or bezier curve etc those are present which has got certain advantages some different controlling etc also is possible and uh, similarly you can uh, you can you can generate different different types of models by using that okay so like these are some of the, like so those are important okay so two types analytical entities and synthetic entities and now as uh, we, we can as we have already discussed so there will be different types of analytical entities there will be different types of synthetic entities and most basic of the analytical entities like the point okay now there may be numerous ways by which you'll be able to like uh, different different ways are there like explicit methods are there like implicit methods are there by which you'll be able to designate or define the same thing okay so there are basically two uh, if you recall the previous knowledge okay so explicit explicit uh, way and implicit method both are there okay and uh, here in this particular slide we are showing actually different methods of defining the same point so we can have in the explicit method absolute coordinate system we can have and suppose a point that is lying on this particular xy plane so this xyz okay that is the coordinate system absolute Cartes cartesian kind of coordinate system and if we have to define a particular point suppose p so we can define it by its three coordinates x y z coordinates okay so that is one of the simplest way and similarly in the implicit method uh it, it is that d or like like if there, there, there may be as i have already discussed there may be two ways okay so there may be like digitizer you can use and all okay so similar that things will be discussed later on similarly you can have cylindrical coordinate system to define the same point okay so like uh, in that particular case all of you already know r theta and z values okay so those are the three coordinates that we uh, use in the case of cylindrical coordinates okay so that is also possible similarly spherical coordinate system also it can be used but in the in the case of our cat cam we generally don't go for it so using cartesian coordinate system has got certain different advantage like it's ease ease of defining it and similarly the for cylindrical coordinates also sometimes we have to use similarly like uh, we can we can define points okay with respect to already some existing entities will it might be there okay like for the kind of a uh, uh, for the case of kind of line okay so we can have two endpoints okay those are nothing but the points suppose p1 p2 okay if you join them actually you are going to get that particular line and uh, in case of arc so if you have the endpoint data so in between if you have another well, suppose uh, some a set of points in between and if you link them actually okay you can generate that particular arc similarly for generating different, different curves you can result it can be resulted from the whatever is the endpoint data of the text using entity okay so sometimes those are the defining points okay how we can how we can define the points in case of different different models similarly uh there are some other ways like you can you can have uh, so these are actually self-explanatory if you just go through it so you'll be able to generate it like the center point of an existing entity you can have like suppose we have to have a line 
center point of that particular line, nothing but the kind of it can generate the bisector. Similarly, from that particular circle, so if you have that center point, it is nothing but the center of that particular circle from which you can locate that particular point data and using that particular point data, you'll be able to generate that whatever with the circle. Or similarly, R also can be okay. Similarly, there are like uh, numerous methods of defining lines also, like there may be some method like uh, you can you can define any of the points okay at least minimum two numbers of points by any of the method previously defined method and uh, if you join them actually you can get uh, lines okay so similarly like you can you can you can have like already whatever is the xyz axis that is already there or some other user defined coordinate system that you use in this particular cat -cat. so you can have some access uh, line which can be parallel to suppose or uh, the x-axis or your defined y-axis or like that so that way also line can be defined similarly you might have some reference line and um, with reference to that reference line also you can define your own line like you can have you can call it like a perpendicular line with respect to that particular reference line or maybe the parallel line you can get generate okay so those are some of the methods by which like with respect to a reference line also you can generate similarly if you know uh, if you want to uh, define line so suppose with respect to some existing entities like some circles and all so you can have like tangent data and from that particular tangent okay post tangent to the axis and existing entities so so if you have one particular center okay, one point okay and from there suppose you have already existing entity that is the circle and how many line uh, how many tangents you can have so you can draw two tangents so that way also if you define with respect to this that means tangential to this particular existing entity that way also you'll be able to define it similarly if you have two suppose two circles so in that particular two circles if you want to use the tangent data so in that case you can see that so there are four ways which by which we'll be able to define that particular line so these are some of the possibilities and for actually uh, defining all those different different possibilities later on while uh, we'll be solving some problems while we'll be uh, like this concept also will be useful in cnc programming also like how you can define the line suppose sometimes we'll be defining it with respect to tangent data with respect to some existing entity you might know suppose this is kind of the circle etc that is available both the circles are available and uh, you can suppose this particular line is tangential to them so that way also it can be done okay so up to this much any confusion okay. Let me know if you understood or not. Anyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly, for sometimes you may have to draw suppose circles or some I can say different arcs, etc. So for them also there may be like different logics which are available. So you can you can like no, you can you can know you may you might know the radius or the diameter of it and the center of it so in that particular case that are very easily all of you can generate i guess and if it is a kind of closed arc suppose constant radius curvature okay and uh, you know the center and if you know about this endpoint suppose whether it's just kind of closed curve or open curve or like that so based on that you can either generate that particular circular arc or the whole circle okay similarly you can you can have uh you can define that particular circle by three point method also suppose if you know suppose these are three points which are on the same plane okay, that's four planar points okay they are not intersecting at all and uh, through that if it is if it is passing okay suppose if a circle is passing through the three points if you know that location of the three points then also you can completely define the uh, okay and uh, if you know about the center of the circle as well as any point on that particular circle then also you can very easily generate that particular circle how because you know if you this is the center and this is the point on that particular circle so this become this distance become the radius of it and anyone can generate it okay so similarly it might be like circle it might be just like in the previous case the ten, uh, line we have drawn are tangential to the uh, circle so similarly if now a line is already available so tangential to that particular line you can generate the circle also if you know that particular suppose or oh, whatever is the given radius of that particular circle so very easily all of you can generate similarly there are very uh, different other ways to different ellipse parabola like different methods 
so these things i believe all of you from your engineering graphics knowledge also you already know how to draw the leaves parabola etc so those are nothing but the logics that we use for defining it okay so after this much i believe there should not be any problem so that means right now what we have some just different different ways of generating points line data etc okay I believe after this much there is no confusion. If you have any, you can ask me. Okay, seems no. Okay, now uh, we are just showing in this particular slide some different methods of defining different synthetic curve. So what are the different synthetic curves that we have discussed? Like x plane, b plane, bezier curve, etc., etc. Okay, so now later on we'll be discussing about its uh, them in details right now in this particular slide. I'm just showing how we can illustrate them, how we can draw them, okay? And what are their, their properties? So all those properties, etc. of these different, different splines we'll be discussing and if time permits, we'll also be solving some problems with respect to them, okay? So now, now for this particular cubic plane, okay? So we have to have different data sets, uh, data points or data sets. So which are data points means what? So these are nothing but some points which are exactly suppose it might be the starting point and any different different points which are situated on that particular curve okay and uh, in that case of cubic spline so different data points will be required so those are nothing but our point of interest for our case okay suppose this point which is being shown here similarly this 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 so right now here p naught and p and these are nothing but the initial point and the final point for the particular spline okay and uh, actually uh, these other points which has been shown those are nothing but some other points which are located on that particular spline okay so now the for this particular cubic spline actually it's a kind of uh, uh, cubic in nature actually okay so that's why actually uh, your, your the name is actually cubic spline and uh, some of the properties which in details we'll be discussing in, in the subsequent classes but right now you must know that uh, this cubic spline at the cubic spline actually you can have tangent data and at at the start point and at the end point actually you can the situation is such that actually it is tangential here so if you look at this particular initial point and this p dash okay at o at the initial point okay so this is kind of the tangent so it will be tangential here at the end similarly wherever it has and actually here also this way the location is tangential okay that means slope data point data and some slope data it will be required okay and in case of visual curve it's once again a kind of synthetic curve only there will be later on we'll see that there are kind of uh, some notations for them okay how can we'll be able to define but right now you must know that once again uh for design different uh for defining the bezier curve also a set of given data points will be required once in uh, uh, including the initial point and the final point of it and uh, actually whatever this uh, this point the dotted portion okay wherever you have seen okay like like this one this one this one etc okay actually these are some of the data points which actually defines this nature this curve nature of this particular p0 curve okay so actually whatever point we have considered actually that points were like this p dot is the initial point and uh, we have got some point here okay similarly another point was actually here another point is here and the last point pn to somewhere here and it has resulted to this kind of curve okay it's not like actually directly it is passing through this that point and like that but this bezier curve it remains it is known as the convex hull of this particular data point okay you can see if you start from here go like this this and this okay similarly after that it is like this okay so actually if you look at this particular curve okay this solid portion so it is within the convex hull of this data set it is not going outwards or like this okay neither it is directly passing through the in between points but it is always passing through the first point and the last point and it remains under the convex hull of this particular data set okay and that's why whenever you have called for this different spline etc in in your any catch of there so when you have, you have pointed suppose you have initiated from here one point suppose next point suppose another point like that okay that's why when you have actually started from here next one you have given here next one you have given there automatically even though you expected that this should 
cross like this or it should have a curvature like this passing through the whatever the points that you have selected but because of the this synthetic nature of this particular curve actually it will follow the construction will be something like it will always pass through the initial point and the end point and in between whatever is the data point that is there it will remain inside the convex hull of it okay so similarly we have got base plane curve so known as the basis plane so it's something as the it's something like somewhat like visual okay but uh, it is kind of approximates it approximates a given set of different data points so just like in the previous case it will also remain inside the convex cell but there will be like some modification uh, like some properties are there which we will discuss and which will distinguish between these two curves okay up to this first have you understood let me know yes please respond okay thank you so others have you understood or not just i want to hear from the other also okay no. okay. okay in the meantime let me take your attendance also today is seven right i'm suman is here Marilyn. Yes, sir. Avinas. Yes, sir. Empiler. Empiler, are you active? I can see you, but whether you are active or not. That's yes, sir. Ducting. I'm here. Yeah, ducting. Yes, sir. What happened to Rusty? Do you know about him? And Ricolo is here, no? Maybe he doesn't yes, know, sir. Uh, why? No, no because it was uh, uh, it was from eight or uh, classes. Classes, not from eight classes. It starts from today. Okay, okay, sir. Today, some of the best search, but if I believe you have got uh, gone through the whatever the notification that is here. So for others, like it was. Uh, some civil and all just add them because they have got some more number of uh, subjects and for you people it was different but right now as for the new notification so that will be plus okay so anyhow so now if you think of any geometric modeling or modeling system okay in sort known as gm okay so right now we are talking about solid model okay so in that case so there are certain desired properties for any kind of system so what are they so See, by this time in the second module, we already know about the different transformation operations and all, okay? And uh, whatever is the geometric model, solid model, suppose if you have, okay? It must stay in grid with reference to with regard to its location as well as orientation whenever you apply any transformation operation. That is one of the uh, like desired property of any kind of geometric modeling system. Similarly, like uh, if we think of that particular solid model, so in that case, the solid, it must have certain interior, okay? and uh, it should not have any kind of isolated or hanging kind of parts okay and uh, whatever is the boundary of that particular solid it has to be very uniquely identified it should not be it should not be ambiguous okay and uh, and uh, suppose if we want to suppose you already know suppose uh, whenever you are actually doing any kind of modeling and all okay you sometimes suppose add two entities or sometimes you remove some entities like just while suppose making the holes and all you have that particular circular cross section. You sometimes, sometimes you depending on your requirement, you sometimes extrude it, sometimes you eliminate it, and all. So there are actually some closed loop Boolean operations are actually going on. Okay, like the union intersection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, that particular whatever is the modeling system that you are using. So it should be, it should, it should actually uh, allow those operations to control whatever is the nature of that particular curve. Okay. So these are some of the very standard ways of doing it. So whatever is the geometric modeling system that you are actually using, so it should be it should it should it should uh, different transformation operation and other standard operations like different Boolean algebraic operations. It should actually uh, it should uh, it should be uh, competent with it. Okay, it should be competent with it and it should operate as such and whatever uh, depending on whatever is the type of uh, operation that you are performing. So it must produce the desired type of understood 
and uh, it should be definitely finite only so whatever is the solid model that you are using it should it cannot occupy indefinite kind of volume so it should have finite volume as well as say um it has to be kind of it should be finite okay so indefinite kind of thing it cannot happen okay and finite number of surfaces etc which are properly defined it should be there so these are some of the desired properties for any kind of geometric model and uh, with this maybe we are also looking behind time so today we will be stopping here so if you have under not understood some or any confusion is there you can ask me stop here for today so in the next class we will start with part of presentation and you know do you have understood or not okay so then with this we will stop here for today so thank you everyone for joining thank you sir Thank you, sir. Okay, I'm ending them.